Hey guys, welcome back to the Daily Medical Series. This is your girl Nikki, and today I'll be talking about cartilages of the larynx. So, what is the larynx basically? Um, the larynx is basically your voice box. So, we use our larynx to help us cough, it helps to protect our lower respiratory tract, and it's just helping speaking or your phonation. They call speaking or producing sounds phonation so your larynx is in that and it's located anterior in front of your neck and you can touch your larynx and you can feel some vibration whenever you're talking so there are basically nine cartilages located in the larynx we have three unpaired you can see them here and then we have three paired so the three paired would give six and the three unpaired gives us nine so let's, I just put this up so you can see the names and get familiar with the names. So when I'm saying the names in the video and showing the picture, you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So to remember the unpaired ones, I use CRET. So that's C-R-E-T. CRET. So that's cricoid cartilage, epiglottic cartilage, and thyroid cartilage so that's c r e t and you'll understand why i use c r when i get to the other ones so that's cret for your unpaired cartilage and for your paired cartilage here we have these big names so i use to remember them i use just say a c c as in a c as in it's really cold so i said a c or it's too hot and I want some AC and I have to stress that I want AC so that's how I use this to remember this it's really weird but it works for me so the names basically are a retinoid cartilage we have a pair of that so we have two of those corniculate cartilage and cuneiform cartilage so we have two of each so this is basically the six pairs not six pairs, six cartilages and three pairs. So you notice that we have two seeds right here, corniculate and cuneiform. We have another C over here. So to not get them confused, I use a CR for this one, for this mnemonic. And this one, from you figure this one out, you know that the others are the paired, basically. So remember, unpaired, cret, cricoid, epiglottic, thyroid. Paired, a retinoid, AC, corniculate, and cuneiform. So let's let's go to the pictures. So I'm firstly going to talk about my unpaired cartilage, and I'm going to start with the biggest one. So your biggest cartilage is basically your thyroid cartilage. So you can see in this diagram, the colors or the shaded portion are represented by the key here. And I got this photo from Teach Me Anatomy. They have this really cool photo and I thought I'd share it, share it with you guys. So here, you can match the colors to the pictures. This one right here is your thyroid cartilage. So it's a big cartilage. It's very large and it's a prominent structure and it's very visible in adult males. So it composed of two sheets of laminae basically and they are joined together in the front right here by something called a laryngeal prominence and that's what you call Adam's apple so you see this bone like thingy protruding through some men their neck you say it's Adam's apple it's basically your thyroid cartilage or the joining of your thyroid cartilage so right here you get your, lamin your laryngeal prominence or your Adam's apple from your thyroid cartilage. So this big one here is your th thyroid cartilage. So let's look at another one, your cricoid cartilage. So here we can see your cricoid cartilage in yellow. We can see it here in yellow and we can see it here in yellow. It's not very visible in this picture but our cricoid cartilage is like a complete ring so it forms a complete ring or circle around the larynx. So this is of clinical importance because during an emergency like you can apply pressure 
on the cricoid cartilage to basically occlude your esophagus and prevent regurgitation so things from coming back up of the gastric content from your stomach and they call this the cricoid pressure or the silix maneuver so that's very important for your cricoid cartilage just remember that your cricoid cartilage is below your thyroid cartilage and it forms a complete ring around your larynx basically and it's at the level of c6 so vertebral level c6 so here below your thyroid cartilage we have your cricoid cartilage at the level of c6 it forms a ring around your entire larynx so the next uh, unpaired cartilage is your epiglottis so You'd probably know your epiglottis is like a little tongue at the back of your head or the back of your throat. Basically, you can see it in green here. And so this one would be your epiglottic cartilage or your epiglottis. So it's basically a leaf shaped. You can see it shaped like a little leaf and it's basically elastic cartilage. So it's very flexible. So it's, it's at the back. And it's at the anterior aspect of the thyroid cartilage, basically. So it's on top of your thyroid cartilage. And basically, during swallowing, we use our epiglottis. And it helps with flattening. So here, because I told you it was very elastic and flexible, it can flatten. And it moves posteriorly, or it moves to the back to close off your larynx and prevent aspiration so you don't want content to be coming up and going to the wrong place and all those things so this helps in that so remember we have your thyroid cartilage coming together to, at the laryngeal prominence to form your adam's apple we have your cricoid cartilage forming a complete ring around your larynx at the level of c6 and your epiglottic cartilage or your epiglottis the leaf shaped structure here which basically helps in preventing aspiration. It's gonna do the next two in one. So that's basically this blue here and this purple here. So your arytenoid cartilage and your corniculate cartilage. So this one right here is your arytenoid cartilage and this little purple one here is your corniculate cartilage. So the Arytenoid cartilage are basically pyramidal in shape. You can see they shape like a little pyramid and they sit directly on your cricoid cartilage. You can see that. And you can see the corniculate sits directly on your arytenoid cartilage. So the arytenoid cartilage is very important because it's a, it has an apex, a base, a vocal process, and a muscular process. So a lot of things attaches to it. So the apex basically is attached to the corniculate cartilage here you can see that the base articulates with the superior border the, the top part of the cricoid cartilage uh, the vocal process basically will attach to the vocal ligament and the muscular process is provides attachment for the posterior and lateral cricoarytenoid muscle so you have attachment for another cartilage at the top or the apex. It has attachment at the base for another cartilage. It has attached hair for the vocal ligament. And it also has attachment for a muscle of two important muscles, the posterior and lateral cricoarytenoid muscles. And these muscles help in basically abducting the vocal cord so you can speak and so you can breathe so this is a very important cartilage and this corniculate one is just very minor there's nothing much about it and it's just basically you just know it as the one that sits on top of the arytenoid cartilage basically so just to jump over what we did so far so we don't get confused thyroid cartilage big one form the laryngeal prominence or the adam's apple Cricoid cartilage at the level of C6 forms a, rings around, a ring around your larynx and you can compress it when we're having gastric fluid regurgitation. Then we go to your epiglottis right here. It prevents aspiration when we're swallowing. And here we have our arytenoid cartilage and on top of it is our corniculate cartilage. 
So the last cartilage is our cuneiform cartilage. So unfortunately, we can't see it on this diagram as you can see because because it's located within the ariepiglottic fold. So when you hear ariepiglottic fold, think about the word ari epiglottic fold. So located within those um within those areas so it's basically covered and we can't see it much so there's basically no direct attachment um to it but it just acts to strengthen the fold between the arachnoid and the epiglottis basically so we're gonna do a little review then we can look on a real life structure so we can see if we understand this so basically i want you to say it with me out loud because you might think you know it in your mind but when you're ready to say it, you can't remember what you should say. So say it with me. So this is your thyroid cartilage. Two laminates come together to form a laryngeal prominence or your Adam's apple in adult males. Here we have your cricoid cartilage, which forms a ring around the entire larynx. You can put pressure on it to prevent esophageal regurgitation of gastric fluid or the silex manova. We have a lot of ligaments attached to it. Next, we have our arytenoid cartilage which has a, a base and apex where the corniculate cartilage sits vocal ligament attaches there we also have a muscle process where the lateral and posterior cricoid arytenoid muscles attach and the last one is basically a cuneiform cartilage and the cuneiform cartilage is located between the ariepiglottic fold and it helps to strengthen this fold so remember we have nine cartilages on our larynx three unpaired correct and three pairs that are paired basically and that is AC. Excellent. So we're going to look on a real life specimen now. So here we have a real life specimen of an if a real larynx with some cartilages. So basically, you can see the muscles, you can see the cartilages. So let's just identify what we can see on this one. So this is an anterior view or the front view. So here we have a hyoid bone up here. Here we have the thyrohyoid muscle, the muscle that comes from the hyoid bone to the thyroid cartilage, makes sense. And basically here we have the cricothyroid muscle. Where do you think that would come from? From the cricoid to the thyroid. Just listen to the name. Cricothyroid or thyro cricoid basically what they choose, cricothyroid. From the cricoid to the thyroid or from the thyroid to the cricoid basically here we have the trachea you can see the rings so with the cartilage you can see right here this big one here is your thyroid cartilage remember it comes together to form your adam's apple or your laryngeal prominence here we have the ligament attaching the cricoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage and what do you what would you call that ligament cricothyroid ligament and it's right there it's pretty easy guys and here we have our cricoid cartilage right below your thyroid cartilage so these are the main ones thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage cricothyroid muscle a muscle from the cricoid to the thyroid thyrohyoid muscle a muscle from the thyroid cartilage to the hyoid bone and cricothyroid ligament, a ligament between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. So that's basically it for your cartilage, guys. I hope you guys understand. And if you have any more questions, just drop them in the comment sections below. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as our Instagram page at the DN underscore medical series. So see you next time. Bye.